Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be going over how to create a spline in which you can create a kind of a road system like this. So what you can do is just move a spline to create a road like this. So this is just one mesh which I have expanded to create this kind of curve. It's just one small 3.7 meter by 3.7 meter square. Now obviously this doesn't have to be a road, it can be for anything that you like. But for me I've done a road because in a previous video what I did was have an object move along a spline as you can see this car here. So if you want to watch that video to, so you can have a car going along like this as well, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. And a lot of people asked to be able to create a road system like this. So this is what we're going to be going over and creating today. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually import our road segment or whatever it is that you're going to be using the spline for. And again, for my example, it is a road. So I've just created this in Blender very, very quickly. Again, it is a 3.7 by 3.7 meter square grid. And if I go into edit mode, you'll notice I've also kind of subdivided this up as well. You're gonna want to make sure that you do this. And this is so that the spline can actually bend inside Unreal. So the more polygons, more faces and vertices you have in here, the better it will bend. So you'll notice it will be able to kind of curve around like this instead of just having it square each time. But obviously the more you have, the more demanding it will be as well. So it's about finding a good balance. And for me, 10 by 10 seem to work great. Obviously do that how you want. Then just import this into Unreal Engine as you would normally. If we open this up, we can go into wireframe and we can see that we have all those different segments there as well. It's a little hard to see because of the um, sky sphere in the background as well, but you can notice it. So that's the first thing that you need to do. And once we've done that, we can actually create our spline BP. So I'm gonna right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this one Road Spline, or you can name it Spline BP, again, whatever makes most sense for you, and open that up straight away. The first thing we want to do in here is add a component and add a spline. And that is all we need to do in the viewport. You can rename that to Road if you want, which actually I might do. Again, choose whatever you want. And I can compile, save that, and now we're going to go over the construction script. And the reason we're doing it in the construction script instead of the event graph is because this will update every single time we actually change the blueprint. So every time we want to add a new spline in there, it will do this straight away. We don't have to begin the game for the road to spawn in. So I hope that makes sense. And in here, we want to do some nice and simple code. The first thing we're gonna do is come out of this and get a for loop. Like so, not a for each loop, just a for loop. And the reason we're doing this is because we want to actually create the correct amount of roads for the amount of segments which we create inside of our spline. So to figure out how many that's going to be, we can drag in our spline which we created earlier, which I named mine road. Out of this, we can get number of spline points. And a spline point is again, when we add it into the level. So when we create a new spline point, that's basically what this is. So when we hold alt to get a new one. However, this is obviously going to get all of them. We do not want to be including the start and end of our spline. So the start and end is obviously two. So that's a total of two spline points that we want to take off of the total number. So drag out the return value and get an integer, minus an integer, and we want to minus two. So now we've got the total number of spline points excluding the beginning and end, and that will go into the last index of the for loop. So first index is going to be zero, so the total amount of times it will go through this for loop is the amount of spline points we have excluding the start and end point. Hope that all makes sense again. Now out of the loop body, we're going to add spline mesh component which is something we didn't do last time and this is actually going to add in obviously a mesh which will be our road or again whatever it is for you so we now have something visual on this as well if we keep that selected we want to change a few things in here so obviously the most important one is the static mesh we want to actually add something onto here so for me that's going to be my road segment but again choose whatever you want to do and you can obviously change the material in here as well if you wanted but i'm not going to bother then the only other thing we need to change in here is the forward axis. Now I'm going to leave mine as X as that is good for me, but this will also be different depending on what mesh you're using. So if I compile, save and close this, I'm going to open up my road segment. For me, it's going to be X because if you notice in the bottom left down here, the forward facing direction for my road is actually on the X axis. So that's the direction I want it to go. If it's this way for you, you'll notice down here that's obviously Y or if it's going up and down, that is obviously Z. So just change the forward axis here for whatever the forward axis actually is for your mesh. So I hope that makes sense. So we'll close that and go back to our blueprint. Now we're adding in the component. 
but we need to tell it where we're adding it. So we'll drag out the return value and set, start, and end. Nice and simply like this. Now we also need to figure out the start and end positions. Just before we do that, we're going to drag out the return value again and attach component to component, connecting that into there. The parent for this is just going to be the default scene root of the current blueprint we are in. So it's essentially attaching it to the current blueprint. So we'll compile and save. We're very close to being done. Again, we just need to figure out the start and end positions of our spline. And that is why we've got the for loop here with the number of spline points. So we're going to drag in our spline, which again for me I named road. Out of this, we're going to get location and tangent at spline point. Because again, you'll notice we need the start, position, which is basically location, and the tangent. And again, it will be for each specific spline point for each specific road. So this one here, we can have the index from the for loop go into the point index of that. And this is going to be the start position. So I'm going to select it, press the three dots, and just right in here, starting position, just so we know. And then we're going to duplicate this, again, put the target into there, and name this one to be ending position, as that's what this one's going to be. Now we can't just put the index into there, because that's obviously going to give us the same thing. Instead, we're going to get an integer plus an integer, and connect that in there, leaving it as one. So if we were to add one to the index, that's going to be the end position and tangent. And just leaving it as it is will be the start. So that is perfect. We now have the start and end locations and tangents. So we can just connect those straight into there. Start position, start tangent, end position, end tangent, like so. So that should now be it working perfectly for us. So we can compile and save that. And like I say, this should now work perfectly, so we should be able to now have our own spline system. For me, it is a road. So if we were to minimize this, let's drag in our road spline, and you'll notice that we now have our actual spline mesh, or our road mesh, sorry, on here. If we were to select the end of the spline here, hold down left alt and drag out, you'll notice it's now, as we move our spline, it's giving us a new road mesh. If I were to drag this out again, move it to left, you'll notice it is now curving it nicely, instead of just creating a new square to the side, it's actually creating a nice curve, and that is again because of the subdivisions that we added in inside of Blender. So this is great. We now have it working perfectly. We can create new meshes in which we can also curve it to how we want and how we see fit like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create another loop like I did at the start of the video. Well, not really a loop, I suppose, but just another kind of road system like this, just to show it working how we want. And another easy tool is up at the top right here, you can change between the world and local, which is nice, like this. So you notice this isn't exactly straight, however I cycle between it, it now is. So you can obviously change that, and that's good for when you're changing the rotation. So if I change it like that, it's now a little bit better, but if it was like this, it's not as good. So obviously it just changes about, so use it how you see fit. Now obviously I'm doing this very quickly, so it doesn't look amazing. You'll obviously be able to make it look a lot nicer for you. Well, I'm just trying to get in a few straight pieces and a few curves just to show it all off working how we want. So what I've done here is I've created a nice and very simple looping system for our road. So we now have a nice road going around, kind of looks a bit like a racetrack, but obviously very small. So again, that's just how quick and simple it is to create a nice road system like this. And again, if you watch my previous video, which again, I'll leave a link to in the description down below, what you can do is add a car, which will just drive around here automatically. Now I've already got that set up, so I'm gonna put that in just to show you it working. So if this looks slightly different, don't worry, it's because it is, um, it, Unreal just crashed as I tried to change this up. So I've just remade it very quickly, uh, but all I had to do was replace the spine on the road, all the code was still there. But let's have a look at this working with the car driving along as well. So you'll notice it's going quite quickly this time, that's just because I've still got it set to take 15 seconds around the whole thing, but it's a much larger map this time. But as you can see, this does work perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, as we've done everything we want to do. What we've done is in this video, we've actually set it up so we can actually create a visual spline going round. So in this example, it's a road system. And again, in the previous video, we set up creating a car driving along this road, linked in the description down below. But today, what we did was we created the system for actually creating a visual spline mesh. So as we increase the spline and make it bigger, we can place a mesh on there 
in my example it's a road where you can do pipes fences paths really anything you want where you'd want to maybe create a big thing like walls as well so something quite long but also curving this would be the perfect system for you so thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i hope you found it helpful and if you did make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one